My name is Matt. Uh, I work for Collabora as a software engineer. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, watermarks. Uh, before I go into that, I will uh, do a quick overview uh, of how LibreOffice Online works and how the rendering works. Uh, let's get started. So the online uh, has two parts, uh, the server obviously and the, the client. Uh, the server is basically creates number of these instances by number of this kit and control your life cycles. And by that, uh, it, it's taking care of uh, the rendering. Okay, it's taking care of the rendering the document and handles communication with file storage by WAPI like protocol. And um, we use it for, uh, which I'm going to explain in a minute, rich documents app. And it acts like a bridge between the users and the LibreOffice kit. And users, I mean the UI. And it also, uh, the bridge is uh, like passing commands to the LibreOffice kit. And that's the callbacks from uh, LibreOffice kit back to the client. These parts are all done in C++. And the client, uh, it communicates with LibreOffice Online website at the moment. Uh, it's written in JavaScript and based on Leaflet, uh, which is a map rendering framework. And why I use it? It's uh, because the document is rendered in tiles, and the the way the uh, leaflet works is uh, also the tiles. So it's a, a great framework for us to use it. So the rich documents app is available for uh, next cloud and all cloud. Uh, it basically handles the storage and the users, obviously, and it enables to work with the documents on the cloud, and it handles uh, the requests, copy like requests from the client. Uh, the client here is not the, the user itself, it's uh, LibreOffice, actually, LibreOffice Online. As I mentioned earlier, uh, it handles uh, communication file storage by API protocol. And the, the online is acts like a, a client as well to communicate with the file server. Um, so uh, also uh, with this protocol, uh, we can pass the user permissions uh, to the of the server and permissions like if it's the document is read only or if we allow printing of the document or downloading and also watermarks which is available in secure view mode in this app. Um, so the rendering. Uh, how, we, how the tiles are rendered, how the document is rendered actually. Uh, it starts with JS, uh, obviously, uh, we connect uh, to the WebSocket demo through JS and uh, it's, we send a message to all the document, we send the document, it is loaded in the background and uh, LibreOffice Kit, what it does is the day it renders the document into tiles and we it sends it send it back to the client actually and also also the tiles are stored in the cache. So how the kit knows what tile to be rendered. So um, okay. Uh, as it's seen here, uh, 
tiles to be rendered uh, are requested uh, between the web socket daemon and the kit, and there is a communication socket between them. Uh, basically, when we want to render the document, we send a request like uh, the first one, and the tile online. Uh, it, it has the information about the tile itself. Like uh, there is on, uh, there is two types of rendering requests, which is a uh, one of them is tile, the, the other one is tile combined. Uh, as it can be understood from its name, uh, it, it is uh, it is more than one tile to be rendered because. Um, when you have changed the document, and it is more likely you change the change more, more than one tile actually. So instead of sending the tiles one by one and to, to, to render them, we put them in the one message and and render it. So uh, as as it's seen uh, in the message, if you look at the word word parameter and it has eight uh, data uh, separated by commas, uh, which means that we have eight tiles to be rendered. So the other ones uh, has the positions and offsets. So if you look at the image size, you, it's zero, zero, zero. So what it means is uh, this is just a rendering request. Uh, there is no tile is rendered. Uh, so far, so the image size is zero. So we have this uh, function called paint part tile. Uh, after we parse this, parse this message and uh, we send the information to this function and. Just painted uh, tile. So after that, when the tiles are rendered, they, they should be sent back to the daemon to eventually to the uh, UI. So the, as you can see, the message has changed a little bit. So uh, the image size has now uh, values instead of zeros. So uh, what it means is uh, the first tile is uh, 8,301 bytes and the second one is 8,375. So this, this message is, uh, is not sent by itself, but also we added to the image data below this message. Uh, so we use this image sizes uh, to parse it correctly. So how the watermarks are rendered? Uh, we render the watermarks in all the tiles uh, that are requested. So it is done after the tile is rendered in the core and we check if the, the document has watermark. Um, we just, if so, we just uh, Painted with uh, the watermark. So this is done in online, not in core, but the original uh, rendering is in is in core. So after the rendering of the watermark, uh, it looks like this. As you can see, uh, each tile has has a watermark uh, rendered in the document. So how about PDF export? Uh, this is the new feature we implemented this year uh, by, re by request. Uh, so the, when the document has watermarks, uh, there was no, it, it wasn't visible in the PDF export. So uh, we implemented it. How we did it? Um, it's done in the core. Uh, there is a function which is save as it's a great function for converting the document formats uh, in this way. In this case, it's PDF. You just pass PDF in the format, and 
rename it uh, as a PDF extension. So the, the problem was the sending the watermark text to the uh, PDF rendering function. Uh, so we used this uh, filter options parameter to pass it. This function is not actually made for this, but uh, we just send the watermark text and parse it and uh, removes the watermark info in the parameter. It's because it's not made for it. Uh, so uh, the other problem is no, there is no tiles in PDF. Uh, so we have to implement in a way that it will look like they are tiled in the document. So uh, this is the this is how it looks after the PDF export. Very similar to the uh, how it looks like in uh, in the actual document. So uh, it how it is done in desktop. Uh, is the other story. Uh, there's an option in the PDF export, you just uh, check sign with watermark and put the watermark text and it will look like this. So uh, I basically took this uh, function and turned into this uh, to match with the online. So problems with it and the current status. The current status is, uh, as I explained, watermarks are rendered in each tile of the document and watermark object is created once and used globally. And the problems uh, come with this actually. And they they are shown for every user regardless of their permission. So, you see, let's say you are the document owner and there is a secure remote user reading the document at the same time with you. So, the, the watermark object will be created for the user and you, since it's not checking whether the, you are the document owner or not, it will render the, all the tiles. So, even if you are the document owner, you will see the watermarks on your document, which is um, which is silly because you are a document owner, you are editing your document, and you, you will see the watermarks. It, it doesn't make any sense. So it's once created. The other problem is it once created, always visible. So uh, when a secure mode user will Open and uh, after it op they open the document, uh, since the object is created, even if they close it, and uh, the object will be still there, so uh, you will see the watermarks, you will continue seeing watermarks. So, the plan to fix this uh, uh, we should obviously render the tiles according to the users. So each tile will have their own state ID, which will include the user's permissions. Um, so it doesn't have to be just the permission. We can add all kinds of stuff, uh, what we want to render uh, into the tile, as, they, as you wish. Uh, the, the tiles will be requested by this state ID, uh, uh, this ID will be should be in the tile message uh, as I showed you earlier. Uh, so we can decide if the tile has watermark or not, and we we can render it accordingly. So we can also, as I said, can render other stuff like non-printing characters, etc. And this should be served directly from the cache because we don't want to render the tiles over and over, over and over again for uh, the same, let's say, the state ID users. You know, if they have the same state ID, the other one 
it should be served from the cache. What I did is the uh, extended the tile message with this state ID also and uh, render the tiles according to it. So uh, what's missing is uh, the caching. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, the image sizes, uh, I mean the zoom of the two documents uh, were not the same, it's because uh, when we render the tile, we store it in the cache uh, with a name, uh, so whenever the user is, uh, one, wants the tile, we first look into the cache and uh, if there is the tile, we take it, so uh, since there is no information about the, the tile, uh, the state view I in mean, tile uh, in the cache, so uh, if they have the same zoom level, the, the names will be the same, so the, the document will be mixed with watermarks and not watermarks, so uh, the feature uh, I will be working on, so thanks for listening. <laughs>